dan antara guru dengan anak murid diberikan dalam bahasa Inggeris pada 24 hari bulan Disember 2018. So the Buddha said, mind that even if a prostitute who has no spiritual intention at all, never had any uh, connection with any spiritual teaching prior to meeting with Ananda at that time, still she can become a nun and attain a hardship. That's a big deal, a hardship, very high, Bodhisattva. Therefore, how can you not? That's what he meant, okay? His assembly, yeah. And you also, of course. <laughs> the Buddha continued. Phew, my God. Has nothing to do with the precept, and I keep talking, huh? And you don't stop me even. Huh? You're supposed to stop me when I blow on. <laughs> Enjoy my attachment to my bedroom. <laughs> enjoy, enjoy my weakness, yeah? <laughs> I confess to you and you enjoy? <laughs> All right. <laughs> I hope I don't have any more of this story to tell you to enjoy. <laughs> that was my weakness. I also love good food. Yeah, I love Indian chapati, roti, and these uh, fresh chutney, you know, they made it oh, with all kind of spice and flavor. Oh, when it's fresh, it's like heaven. <laughs> the chutney you bought from the shop is nothing compared to that. You know, when they make it chop, the, you know, there's a carrot into finger size and uh, other kind of vegetable, even, uh, you know, cauliflowers. And, and then they put, oh, I don't know what kind of spice they put it. Oh, God, it tastes so good. Even I forgot my dignity, I come and beg for some. <laughs> and they give me just a little bit, because I prepare it for everybody. Uh, normally, they wouldn't give it to you before, so everybody, but they, I don't know, they feel I was too skinny, too small, so they feel pity for me, and the woman gave me some. <laughs> I never forget that taste, because <laughs> I was hungry, and also it tastes so good. And fresh, you know, freshly prepared. It's not too sweet, not too sour, not too salty. It's just perfect. The Indian woman, they can make it. Oh, man. And here, even, you make it here, it's not the same. Okay? They put all the love in it also, because for their gurus and the disciples who came to their house, oh, they make it so good. All right, all right. Mm. <laughs> mm. I don't look like a nun or monk anymore, but I really ate only once today. <laughs> when you eat only once a day, you're not as hungry as when you eat more times. It's funny. The less you eat, the less appetite. The less you eat, the less you want. Uh, if you eat breakfast already, then lunch and dinner taste good. But if you eat nothing in the morning, uh, nothing else, then the, f the meal you taste, no matter when, it don't taste as good. Therefore, you don't even eat a lot. You don't feel such a taste. Tasty, like as if you had your breakfast first, and then many hours have lunch. If you have no breakfast, uh, you just eat, but you don't feel. It feels okay, but not, <laughs> no big deal. Mm -hmm. Now, the Buddha continued, and uh, those in the final age who wish to sit in a body manda, meaning sit in the meditation, yeah, the enlightening meditation method, yeah, sit in that way, not just sit, but really have a purpose, a method, uh, a goal, and a truly deep understanding of why you're sitting. Otherwise, you just sit, no use. Mm. There's one more advice for you. If you want to sit longer without moving much, you have to sit full lotus. Uh, yeah? I cannot do it here because it's... Uh, it's not very favorable here. If you sit in a full lotus position, you can sit longer. Although it might be uncomfortable at first, yeah? But after a while, you get used to it. See it or not? <laughs> okay. 
I will take a photo or something in lotus position, and then you can have a look. You know, right? That both legs are crossed together. Yeah. It's a little hard at first, but you get used to it. Not because of sitting in lotus position, you will become Buddha, not like that. But you're more stable. Huh? And if, even if you, you meditate this way, you, you, you will not fall. <laughs> Your legs are locked, yeah? So you don't fall too, too easily, yeah? And you can't sleep too easily. Mm. Even if you sleep uh, in the lotus position, you wake up earlier, quicker. All right, so that's just by the way. Yeah. So the Buddha say if uh, those in the final age, meaning, what mean final age? Mean the age that the Buddha is not no longer there, yeah? After a master passed away 300 years or 500 years maximum, that is the final age of any teaching. If you don't see another master appear in that area, in that era, this is final. Hmm? Okay. But luckily we always have. It's just that it might not happen in that lineage. So you might think, oh, Buddha is gone forever. The teaching and the lineage of the spiritual power of any master is like a river. Sometimes it's hidden under the earth somewhere, and you thought this is the end of the river. No, no. It will seep out somewhere and then appear again. Huh? So it's just like that. Mm. Any of the religious people should look where the river reappear and do not be attached to a location of the original river. Because in all age, all religious branch, there will always be a master somewhere, and not be in the same lineage, not be in the same religious order, but there will be a master for the world, for our world, yes. And even in hell, there is a master called Kristigarbha Bodhisattva. He will stay there forever. Because he vowed, before he became enlightened, he vowed that he will save all the people in hell. He vowed that he will stay there forever until the hell are empty. All hells are empty. Uh, he said, if all hells are not empty, he will not take on the Buddha's position or fruit. He won't become Buddha if all hells are not empty. So he continued to stay in hell to teach the hell beings, whoever he can teach, whomever he still has enough, a little bit of spiritual inclination, he teach them. And then slowly he bring others also to the understanding of the truth. And then continue further teaching and then release their karma. Or because of that, their karma will be lessened or cleansed, and then they can reincarnate as a human being, or a diva, or ashwara, and then continue further. Yeah. That is Kristigaba Bodhisattva. Oh, there are endless sutras in Buddhism I like very much. Maybe one day I will read you this Kristigaba Sutra. Yes, it's very interesting. He talked about. Uh, When I uh, first uh, became a nun in Taiwan, and one of the temple, because we met where I took the precepts, so they invited me to their temple. And uh, the monks and nuns, normally, many of them, they go out to recite the sutra when somebody dies, and their relatives invite them to come recite sutra to, to help to liberate the soul of the dead for 49 days or some days at least, yeah, some weeks. And uh, these uh, monks and nuns also do that job, and they also asked me to come along. I also came. Of course, at that time, I cannot recite this sutra in Taiwanese, where I uh, recite Amitabha Buddha for them. It's fine. And they recite theirs. I just recite quietly, and the five names, yeah, <laughs> at that time. And later I saw they cook with uh, chickens and ducks and porks and stuff like that. So after their session, I call the monks and nuns at, in the temple. I call them and say, this is no, 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 no. You have to tell the people who don't understand that in the Christigaba Sutra, you know, they call it Ti Chang Wang Pusa. 
mean the earth to our bodhisattva, yeah, the one who vowed to save all hell beings before he became Buddha. That means forever endless in this world. There will be always someone in hell. If nobody can save them all, then it's like that. I said, this is no, 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 no. Mm. If you go to recite sutra to somebody who died, you have to tell them, no, no meat. Yeah? Only vegetable. Otherwise, the soul of the dead will be having bad karma. Maybe have to go to hell for that. Or maybe delay, cannot go to heaven because of that. Maybe delay of liberation. Depends. So you have to tell them that. Uh, it says so in the Kristigaba Sutra. If any dead person, the relatives kill or offer meat and animals product in the name of the dead, the dead will be in trouble. Bad karma and may go to hell, may suffer more. Okay? So you have to tell them that. You have to bring the sutra and tell them that. And then they, they bow to me. <laughs> they put their arms together and say, You, Christi Gaba, Christi Gaba Bodhisattva. I said, No, no, no. I read Christi Gaba Sutra. I must remind you, we monks and nuns must tell people because they don't know. They have no chance to read any sutra. They're busy working. And they just go Buddha temple, you know, bow, bow, put some fruit and then take it back and eat. They never have chance to recite sutra. That's why we become monks and nuns. So we have more time to study the Buddha's teaching. And then because we are study already well, we must tell people who don't study it. It's not that you monks and nuns always go and just uh, reciting things and then take an offering from the red envelope and then go home. No, no, we study well because we have time, because we forsake the family time, we, for, we don't do business, we don't worry about mundane occupation, so we have more time. That's the, the, the purpose of being monks and nuns, so we can study a lot more. And then we have to tell people. And then they bow to me, and I say, I'm Christi Gaba Bodhisattva. I say, no, no, I'm no Bodhisattva, I just study the sutras. And then they were very respectful. I said, from now on, you tell people in advance before you come. I say, if you want me to come recite uh, the sutra to bless the deceased, you must cook vegetarian. Otherwise, I don't come. And tell them why. Yeah. The Christi Gaba Sutra is very clear. Even uh, you give birth to the babies, and if the family member kill chicken and all that to give to mother, then it's very bad for both mother and son. Because those demons who love to smell the, the blood from the mother at the time of birth and all that, they're hanging around already, and they will uh, eat all this food also, and then they will make very much a heavy energy for the mother and son at the so sensitive time. They need to more rest, more good energy, but they did all the wrong thing, all the opposite thing. It stay all in the Christi Gaba Sutra, and much more. In the Christi Gaba Sutra, it's even say that the Christi Gaba Bodhisattva tell the Buddha that, oh, I observe in the whole uh, physical world, all the beings, every little second, every little minute, nothing they think, nothing they do, doesn't cause karma for them. That bad. Therefore, you recite the five names all the time, okay? So that you don't think negatively. You don't have chance to act anything negatively. You protect yourself from attracting, so that you don't attract negativity to you as well. And bless your surrounding with this holy energy that you brought forth with you from the initiation power. So the Buddha say, those in the final age who wish to sit in a bodhimanda, you know, enlightenment meditation, enlightening meditation, must first hold the pure precepts of a bhikshu, of a monk, okay? 
And to do so, they must find as their teacher a foremost shramana who is pure in the precepts. You mean some of the monk-like, yeah? If they do not encounter a member of the Shangha who is truly pure, at least somebody like a, a lay person, but take the precepts, okay? Because Buddha has different precepts for different uh, kind of uh, disciples. 250 precepts, okay? But of course, some of them are light precepts. So you can like, uh, can modify it a bit. Like for example, in the Buddha's time, the nuns and monks take shower only every two weeks. Uh, that the Buddha said you can modify it. He told Ananda like that, okay? Uh, many other are more strict, yeah. Some I cannot tell you because you are not the monks and nuns, okay? I just tell, uh, that is a simple, I, I can tell, but many more I cannot. Or like if you eat uh, in the assembly, you, you take the, from public kitchen, food or offering, you don't cover the vegetable with rice, or you don't cover the rice with food, meaning you just do proportionately what you need. Because sometimes if you like more vegetable, okay, then you try to cover the rice so that people don't see how much vegetable you take. Or you don't try to cover the vegetable on top of the rice so the people don't know how much rice you take because you love that kind of rice. Rice is not always white rice. India, they have delicious rice. That's why. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. Mm. This kind of precept, uh, the Buddha says some light precept, you can modify like that kind, okay? Uh, further, I cannot tell you. I'm not allowed to. Uh, you're not allowed to hear the bhikkhu, monks, nun precept if you are not monks and nun. Because if you know it, you have to keep. Also very difficult. Hmm? Many precepts are difficult for lay people, okay? Because the monks and nuns, they're not supposed to have any uh, man-woman relationship, for example, like that, yeah? So there are many precepts for that, and you can't keep it. It's difficult. It's very detailed and sensitive hmm? also. I can't tell you. You should not know <laughs> unless you want to become monks and nuns. Officially, then you take the precepts and hold it, okay? Yeah. Keep it. And well, right now, you keep these five precepts that the Buddha explained. That's good enough, okay? And the five names and the gifts, if I have given you, okay? That's secure you to go to heaven. All right? So the Buddha emphasized again, again, and again. So the Buddha say, in the final age, mean when the Buddha already in Nirvana, if anybody wants to follow this kind of meditation, yeah, that he passed down to his uh, successor, then they have to find the, the, the teacher, a former shamana, is somebody lesser than monks, but keep the pure precepts. Like the monks and nuns, they have 250. And the one who take uh, bodhisattva precepts, maybe 10 precepts, yeah? But have to keep it very purely. 100% pure. And the other normal five precepts. Therefore, the Buddha said you have to find somebody, foremost one, to keep the pure precept, like the ten precepts. Okay? Uh, all, um, the A way of vegetarian, like last time I explained to you. Then that person can transmit the Dharma to you. Mm -hmm. Just like now, some of the residents can transmit the initiation to you while I am still alive, but don't have to be uh, present at the initiation place. And then the Buddha say, if they do not encounter a member of the Sangha who is truly pure, then it is absolutely certain that their deportment in precepts and rules cannot be accomplished. So that. If you want to practice, for example, the Kuan Yin method that the Buddha uh, transmitted, you have to find a pure monk or the pure bodhisattva layperson to transmit it to you. Otherwise, uh, it's uh, not uh, valid. 
It doesn't uh, help you, okay? It doesn't work. All right, now, after accomplishing the precepts, they should put on fresh, clean clothes, light incense in a place where they are alone, and recite the spiritual mantra spoken by the Buddha of the mind 108 times. The one that the Buddha tell you. Actually, in many sutra, there are many uh, mantra uh, re reciting by the Buddha. Okay. Hey, guy, you cannot see me very well, huh? Hmm. Some of you, huh? Yeah, poor thing. <laughs> what to do? <laughs> if I stand up, then the people behind don't see me. <laughs> if I sit, then the people in front don't see me. Yeah, this is the life we have here, okay? <laughs> it is not perfect, yeah? But you are perfect. You will be perfect. And that's important. <laughs> The world can be perfect or not perfect, but we should be perfect. That's important, okay? Right. Mm.